Continuous, good morning to you if you just tuned in. This is TV3 New Day. It's time now for the big issue. And today we have two major topics that we will be discussing as part of our big issue segment. Uh, first one, organized labor has declared that it will go on strike on October 10. And this strike is to send a message to government uh, on the fight against illegal mining. And the fact that government has remained quiet and numb about their request to declare a state of emergency. And then we'll go on to our second one where yesterday for the first time in history, the media was allowed into the halls where the IPAC meeting took place. There were about 12 uh, parties that were present interacting with the EC, and this was on the back of concerns raised by the NDC that there were some discrepancies in the voters' registration uh, process and register. And so they wanted an audit, an independent audit into the register. We'll get into details exactly what the EC chairperson had to say about the mistakes that have been corrected. And so just a reminder as well that if you're watching us, we're also streaming live on Facebook at TV3 Ghana. I would love to hear from you. Today we started off the show with a very heated debate as to whether organized labor um, was right to even declare that it will go on strike on the 10th or if they should have declared the strike almost immediately. Where do you stand on this? We'd love to hear from you. We'll speak to someone from labor as well to find out exactly why they decided to wait till the 10th of October before embarking on their strike. When many Ghanaians expected them to embark on the strike almost immediately and also remember the hashtag is tv3 new day you can find us on x and also on instagram now while you're watching us remember you can play cash out as well star 439 hash select option two play and win and so this morning you're also lending your voice to very important issues and making some money at the same time star 439 hash select option two which is tv3 and win some cool 1,000 Ghana cities this morning. Just like that for playing. Play as many times as possible. At least before the end of the show, you should have played like 50 times. And I'm not even kidding. I'm actually serious about this. The people who usually win that 1,000 Ghana cities play 50, 100 times in the morning. Three of you will get 1,000 Ghana cities each. Make sure to play. Joining me in the studios, Solomon Owusu is back. And he is a senior communicator for Movements for Change. Good morning. Good morning, man. Doing? I'm doing well. Today, no butterfly. No, there is, that's the color. It's the ah, issue, okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. ah, I see, I see that. It's, I like it. Yes, it's it's nice. it's, I, I like yours too. Thank I mean, you. It's a bit of butterfly ah, in there. Nowadays, Solomon yeah. has been getting me. Every day, he <laughs> yeah, seems yeah, to yeah. find some yellow in my outfit. Yeah, you see, it, it fits you. <laughs> this one is I, not I, yellow. This one is brown. I, I, everything I see there is yellow. Something. I mean, it different your eye, it different my eye. Hey, I sorry. see from a yellow perspective. <laughs> we hear you. But you are looking good in it. Thank you. I hope you are well, by the way. Oh, by the grace of God and in, on her, by the sister said the time Ghana would do away with corruption, incompetence, mediocrity, and all the negatives that you can mm. think of, and and have a reasonable and a competent president, the person of Bissal and Chamati, who greets you this morning and your cherished viewers across the land and breadth of this world. We receive it in good faith. Good morning, sir. And also joining us in the studio, we have Julius Anthony. He is the NDC spokesperson on youth development and national communications team member. So good morning. It's good morning. been a while. Where have you yeah. been? <laughs> I've been around. You've dogged yes. us. Uh, I've not. Hey, this <laughs> life. But it's good to see you. I hope it's, you're well. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm well, actually. What's wrong with you? Uh, because, because, well, the, that is one of them. Oh. And then the gross injustice that we can see being meted up to young people of this country, that they would not even find equity before our courts uh, when they protest against the damage to our very environment, mm. the damage to our very livelihoods, the risk of us drinking poisoned water. But here in the same country, people who attack media freedom storm into you know, production studios to disrupt shows because they don't like the views that are being expressed. Go away with that. People who storm courtrooms because they don't like the proceedings that are going on, go away freely because they are members or affiliates of the ruling government. I think that in the face of all these circumstances, nobody should feel fine. And okay. I would be doing gross injustice to our young people who are now incarcerated unjustly, denied bail, mm. because they are protesting against a menace, a canker, a cancer that is going to kill all of us if we do not fight it. I don't all think right. anybody can be fine. And please keep trending the hashtag Free the citizens of Ghana. I see. Thank you very much. Dan Jima Yusif is the Northern Regional Director of Communications for the NPP. It's good to have you join us in the studio this Thank morning. You, I haven't Bella. met you before. How are you doing? Yeah, this is the first time yes. of seeing you. You yes. reflect what you people represent 
or the mm. cameras. I see. So yes. Uh, what, what do we represent? <laughs> you <laughs> represent the the, the, the the TV3. You say the first in news best and in the best in inter entertainment. Mm. So we appreciate you. Uh, you have the larger viewership in my region. Oh, uh, nice. Yes, yes. The morning show is uh, being followed by a larger majority of uh, our mm. people from the north. So speak... I say that's what to them. Uh -huh, I was going to say, speak, to speak your language to them. That's why. <laughs> that's why. Uh, yes, uh, we as a party in government have been working to ensure that the gains are consolidated. Mm. The flag bearer, who is number one on the ballot paper, would continue from the good works of his boss, His Excellency President Akufuado. For the first time, the people of Tatali have their road constructed, $150 million. We are focusing on issues. They will not travel to Tabale and take their clothes to the laundry. That is the government of the issues. For the first time, families are producing high school graduates in the history of Ghana. Mm -hmm. You understand? That is what we are focusing on. So I am just saying that we are very much on course to ensure Dr. Baumia take over from His Excellency President Akufuad. Coming from the Northern perspective. I see. You are saying for the first time, families are producing high school graduates. Yes. You are saying before free SHS, yes, you were yes. not producing. Yes, they no family able. was producing. Myself, I wasn't able to attend school. My mother had to go back for me to pay school fees before I have senior high school education. Uh, so this is the jihad of modern politics coming from my part of the country. Because you, you said for the first time, as if it has never happened before. It has never happened family... before. I met Oh, but my family man. has had a high school graduate. <laughs> no, no, that's I'm not sure the point that I'm making. That's not the, are maybe they, are, they, were, they are capable. That's not the point. I'm saying that for the first time, families are producing as a result of free senior high uh -huh. school education. Now you are being specific. That's the point that I'm making. Okay. No, people, people will understand the point that I'm making. That's the point that I'm making. Okay. You understand? Hey, for the people, uh, people are benefiting from the good works of this government. Okay. That's the point that I'm All making. Right. The rural folks from my region, Thank are, you. are the greater beneficiary of what uh, we are supposed to be uh, discussing. Thank you very much. Let's get into our conversation for this morning. And why did organized labor decide that instead of embarking on a strike almost immediately, they would rather wait till the 10th of October to embark on a strike? So on the 11th of September, they issued a statement and they were demanding that government ban small-scale mining. So they had a meeting. It was by the ad hoc interministerial committee and themselves. And they said that, you know, governments had failed to address concerns Hence their decision to go on a nationwide strike. But they were giving governments up until the 30th of September. And if governments did not heed to their calls to declare state of emergency, to also repeal that um, LI2462, that gives the president the powers to, uh, you know, to give you the chance to go into the forest reserves, some particular forest reserves um, to go and mine. If you don't repeal that law as well, then they would have a problem and they would embark on a strike. And so on the 30th of October, many of us were waiting to hear from organized labor. Well, that meeting was held on the 1st, uh, on the 30th of September, but it was held on the 1st of October. And that is when they declared that in fact, they are going to go through certain processes. And by the 10th of this month, if government still does not respond, they will embark on a strike. Let's hear from the general secretary of the TUC, uh, Mr. Joshua Ansa, as he spoke to the media yesterday. The expiration of our deadline and the failure of government to meet our demands on illegal mining, that is Galamsey, organized labor has decided to declare a nationwide strike we defer from October 10, 2024. We are therefore calling on all workers to stay at home starting Thursday, October 10, 2024, until government accedes to our demands. Other union you know leaders. And so you've heard from him exactly what um, their reasons are. And um, we're hoping that by the 10th of this month, if government still does not go ahead to declare state of emergency, they would embark on the strike. Even though a number of people are quite disappointed and they think that they are only just playing the, the ball around the goalpost and refusing to score. Solomon, I'll start off with you. When you had a decision by organized labor, what did you think? Yes, uh, Bella, they say it's better late than never. I believe labor... Has, has kept so long in doing what is right in the eyes of the, the Ghanaian uh, public. Uh, we are faced with existential threats. They are very being as labor could be terminated if care is not taken. All our water bodies are polluted. And very glad that you have a first hand testimony today when you did a good job with the Uncle Brad River. You saw it. Prior, people, actually. It's yeah, prior, it's prior, right? Prior, yeah. Yes, thank you. People leave it around, drink that very water that you saw. So it's no more a joke. And I was very surprised to hear Dan Yuma say 
that his candidate, Alaji Baumia, will continue with the good works of Nana Kufuado. That is very interesting. That if you are talking about the good works of Nana Kufuado, then one of the good works that he has done as His Excellency is who had allowed our water bodies to be polluted. So if Dan Yuma is telling the entire Ghanaians that this is what Dr. Baumia intends to do, then it is beautiful and the, the Ghanaian electorate must bear in mind. The good job that the president has done and was to have passed the LI 2462 that mm -hmm. enables our forest uh, reserves to be given for mining purposes. And if it, this is one of the good things that the president, uh, the candidate uh, Baumia is going to uh, uh, follow, then, and, 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 and that is it. So Labour, uh, better late than never, they are, they, are, uh, they are on point, they have to carry through. But I believe that in going on strike, they cannot stretch the entire country for that long. Mm. They can do one or two. Fortunately, we have 66 days to make that determination as to who governs this country come January uh, 7, 2025 going. Mm. And so Labour can, beyond this demonstration, I don't believe they have to stretch it, just turn or convert their anger into voting come December so that we do away with this incompetent, this uh, 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 the highly wicked government that have destroyed everything that they came so to. So you're make. saying the strike is not necessary. They should rather strike in the form of votes. No, they should strike, first of all, to let the government know that they can bite. But okay. I don't want them to stretch it. A day or two will suffice. We are very close. Because they did not start this whole enterprise early, I mm. believe Labour should have started it the moment the president failed to put his presidency on the line after assuring all of us that mm. his presidency was going to be on the line. As we speak, people that are fighting, young men and women, are behind bars. These are the good works that Dan Yuma is telling us that the, president, uh, the uh, Baumia administration is going to follow. That people that decided to fight this canker, that is going to save you and I. Now we are afraid to even eat fish. Mm. And if you think you are in a crime, you are far off the problem, then you must be kidding because the vegetables, the food that you are eating are being grown with these contaminated waters. Yeah. And so we are not safe from it. The fishes that are coming are not good. Everything, the air we are, we are, we are breathing, the, the flora and fauna, that is the oxygen, are all being polluted. So how safe are we? But like I said, uh, we have allowed impunity to permeate. Remember, only last Saturday or so, when even your own boss, uh, your president, the Ghana, DJ, uh, Ghana General Association, your president, decided to make an issue with the situation with our environment, the president was not happy with it. Now, the president doesn't want us to even talk about things that matter to the people of this country. So I believe that Labour must do what is right by telling their members to vote against incompetence, to vote for people who will not make their work very difficult. At mm. the end of the day, we are looking for leaders that will solve our problems, and not leaders that will compound our problems. The very 11 September statement that you're talking about, beyond that, what did the president do? He set up a five-member ad hoc committee. When even he set up 10-member interministerial committee chaired by a minister of state, uh, Professor Frempon mm -hmm. and the minister was bold enough, kind enough, to have spoken the truth, written a comprehensive report to the president through the chief of staff. Yeah. staff. What happened to that report? Was it not served? The minister later was sued by people that were mentioned just to close his mouth or seal his mouth that he, he does not speak the truth. If 10 committee members uh, could not do anything, I met one other committee of five. And interestingly, out of the five committee members, all of them were part of the previous committees. And if you read Professor Fimpo Boatis' report carefully, mm. he makes the point that the National Security Coordinator, the Minister for Defense, the Information Minister, were not interested in the works of the committee. And I must tell you that Galamse as an issue is being spearheaded by the presidency. Why do we miss this point? Now, it is beginning to pan out. It's come out clearly. As we hear government functionaries, political NPP functionaries, the coordinator for the Ashanti region, and the medical bell for that matter, are you a free year? A medical doctor himself, mm. who is supposed to be interested in the health of the people on the altar of cheap, bogus politics. He is telling us that, NPP is not going to deal with, or this government is not going to deal with the issues of Galamse, and that he was rather encouraging them to be the polluting the waters and our forest bodies. How was he encouraging them to pollute the waters? If you tell bodies. everyone that those that are doing the Galamse have been imported into this country by 
and that's not democratic. I, I don't want to speak for them anyway. And you are in government. You have all the state apparatus behind you mm. to be able to deal with them. You are not dealing with them. And tell us that oh, they are the ones destroying it and that you are not going to fight against it. Are you not culpable? Okay. Now it goes to confirm what his own running may said, Napo, that when given the opportunity, they will continue to give the people excavators. He, he wants to even elevate the destruction. Mind you, he is also a medical doctor. I don't know what the dental, um, uh, what's the name? Physicians of dental, mm -hmm. what they are doing. Because any serious professional body, if your members are behaving contrary to what you stand for, I believe by now they should be withdrawing the analysis. You understand? For the statements that they've made. Absolutely. Isn't that extreme? Uh, what is extreme about it? When people are dying, innocent souls are dying, and you have a medical... Interestingly, he is also the chair of the Parliamentary Committee on Health. Mm -hmm. So what do you think he will be doing there? He says his, his words were misconstrued. I Every don't even day know when what they exactly. speak, uh, some, all of a sudden, we lack appreciation of comprehension. They have to come back and tell us that we, they were misquoted. Every day they are misquoted. So why don't you behave properly so that you are not misquoted? Well, no. And indeed, that should show everyone that this administration has no business whatsoever staying beyond the 7th of January 2025. Okay. So for you, I mean, just briefly before we land. So for you, um, the organized labor should go ahead and... They should the go, strike, but, but I don't want them to stretch, uh, stretch it. So for what, two days, I mean, two days, days three days. But that won't get government. If they waited 30 days This or government, so, people government demonstrated and he has put them behind bars and he's glorifying. You, you listen to the attorney general. Yeah. They are so happy. So just do it for two days. Okay. And then convert your anger into voting. All right, let me bring Julius in. Do you agree with Solomon? Completely. I, I agree with him completely on, on the, all the issues he has raised. More fundamentally because Galamse wouldn't be going on in Ghana unless the presidency endorses it. And I am putting it on record. And as Professor Prim from Boateng's report has confirmed, mm. that the Galamse menace in Ghana today is spearheaded by President Kufuado himself, Vice President Alaji Mahmoud. He didn't Dr. say Bamiya. the president himself. I he mean, said if, that he said at that the presidency, Galamse that was going on the in presidency. the president's own Chebi residence. For Professor Frimpong Boateng said that, mm. yes, that he was going on at his own residence. I did not appoint Professor Frimpong Boateng. It was Nanado who appointed him. Professor Frimpong Boateng was a minister of state. His statements are official executive documents. And so I am not the one going to impugn it. So the president is at the head of Galamse. And all we have seen so far in this country is that any report on Galamse that does not glorify the president's appointees, he does not accept. We saw in the case of Akunta Mining, which has been fingered by every credible report. The Fort Estate has fingered Akunta Mining. Uh, what do you call it? Professor Frimpong Boatin has fingered Akunta Mining. Several of the president's appointees involved in Galamse. The president does not accept any such reports. Unless the report was to glorify his appointees, he does not accept. Indeed, before investigations were con commenced into Akunta Mining, the president was on a public platform, told all of us that as far as he knows, Akunta Mining is not involved in any such thing. So how do you tell me that the presidency is not spearheading Galamse? They are spearheading Galamse. Galamse is happening because Dr. Ba Baomia, President Kufuado, and all their appointees are in on it. If that does not serve you enough, listen to this. The president of the Republic of Ghana, his character and nature as per this constitution is such that nothing can happen in this country if the president does not want it to happen. The president of Ghana is the head of state, commander-in-chief of the Ghana Armed Forces. At his disposal, he has naval forces, he has the military, he has the police services, he has all the investigative apparatus at his disposal. The president has regional security coordinating councils, district level, he appoints the municipal chief executives, and all those security apparatus report to the presidency. How do you tell me that Galamse can go on in the country if the president does not endorse it. So the president of the republic endorses Galamse. But and to that be is why fair, there was Operation Vanguard where the military, in collaboration with the police, <clears throat> went be, be, out be, there. Be, Bella. There was Operation Halt 1, 2. And 3. Mm, and in, 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 in Operation All in, that. In Operation Halt and all of that, and a Galam Stop and whatever you call all of them. Do you remember Charles Bissu? Mm. Charles Bissu was caught pants down on video, not even pictures, video, leading people to Galamse site, taking bribe with two hands, two hands. To lead people to go and do Galamse. What has happened to Charles Bissu? As we speak today, Charles Bissu is one of the parliamentary candidates for the New Patriotic Party. That is what the MPP government does. They reward thievery. They reward corruption. They reward destruction of our environment with portfolios. That's what they do. And so if you tell me that they did these operations and it means that they were fighting Galamse, all right, they just wasted the resources of the people of the Republic of Ghana. Indeed, the video evidence that we saw from analysis exposés shows us that some of the people who were in these forces were the ones leading the people to Galamse sites. Erasmus Asaridonko, 
his investigation, the video evidence showed us that some of the people in this task force were providing security for the Galamseers. And there's one thing that people of Ghana mistake. They feel that license automatically means that the people are not doing Galamsey. That is not the case. When you read our environmental laws, when you read our mining laws, there's one thing that is clearly apparent. One, environmental impact assessment is at the core of licensing of people mm. to do, go and do Galamsey. The EPA's own internal memos, there were people within the EPA who were complaining that the rates at which they were giving licenses to people to, in, to go into forest reserves cannot be realistic, which means that because of political influence, because of the presidency endorsing Galamsey, people are compelled to give licenses to people without a proper environmental impact assessment. And when that happens, mining of that nature is also illegal because it does not go through the appropriate processes that have been laid down by law. That is why you would see that since 1996, how many licenses were issued to people to mine in this country? About 57 or so. TV3, you reported on it yourself. Under President Kufuado, 1,500 plus was given to people. How is it realistic that you have done environmental impact assessment mm. on 1,500 different mining applications and actually came to a conclusion that these people can actually do safe mining before you issue the licenses to them? So the licensing itself does not even guarantee that the people are doing uh, uh, what you call illegal mining. Beyond that, when there is evidence that people that you have given licenses to traverse the bounds of those licenses and go and mine in areas that you have not licensed for them, what are the consequences? We don't see anything happen to those people in this country. So you can't tell me that the presidency is not in involved in Galamsey. More so, when you read the report on the people who got the license, all of them are either appointees of the government, district chief executives, or executives of the MPP. How does it, did it happen in this country that the only people with expertise in mining are MPP people? The president, daughters, companies, and all of that. How did they, they are not the country? only ones. The same well, Fripon oh. report that you refer to, mm -hmm. it says that there are more NDC people who are also involved in and, 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 and up to now, I am unable to see any names. The, MP, NDC, uh, the MPP names were clearly mentioned. But, but he which, still made that statement. But, but he, so he's unable to provide we cannot choose. We cannot choose to I am, accept I am, I am not the choosing, other aspects of it not, and not I am, accept I am not the part choosing, where he says I am, I am not choosing NDC people were involved. When Professor Frimpong Boatin said the presidency was involved, he landed names. Those people went after persecuting him because he mentioned their names. Where are the NDC people he's talking about? In any case, even if we are to grant without accepting that MPP people were involved, my premise was clear and loud that nothing can happen in this country if the president of the Republic of Ghana does not permit it. If mm. there are MPP people, NDC people involved in Galamse, it doesn't matter. You are the president of the Republic. You have the state apparatus. You have the prosecutorial machinery. Why are you not prosecuting them? The attorney general has time to dedicate a principal state attorney to prosecute young guys. Mm. who go out, you know, protesting against these illegal mining activities in the country, but does not have time to go after the so-called NDC uh, campaigns who are involved in Galamsey. Let me tell you, Galamsey is also going on in Ghana because the president of this country, the government of the New Patriotic Party, mm. have drowned this country to the extent that even the people that they catch, you remember the case of Aisha Huan, because this president has destroyed this country and has been going all over the world begging everybody. The Chinese, the Germans, everybody, begging everybody. Everywhere our president goes, he's with the, the begging bowl. He's unable to even prosecute foreigners and make them face the consequences of destroying our country. Aisha Huang was left to leave this country without any punishment or consequences whatsoever. If Aisha Huang can leave this country, why is it that young people who are demonstrating against these things are in jail? So that is the kind of government we have today. So for me, I support organized labor fully on the strike they have decided to embark on. They should go on the tenth and protest against what is going on by laying down their tools. But why shouldn't Beyond they have that, gone now? Why wait till the 10th? Which is what every Ghanaian is asking at this point. Well, I don't know what considerations they have made, So for you, but, is it a concern but, that... Yeah, it's you concerning know, they're, that they've they're... not acted immediately. Mm -hmm. Very concerning that they've not acted immediately. But one thing is important. More often than not, when people are causing distraction, it is important to keep lending them a rope. If, if, if they fail to actually, I mean, go back on the wrong things they are doing, you give them the rope to hang themselves. Okay. And so the MPP government is hanging themselves by the things they are doing. And for me, there is one important point. Solomon made it and I'll emphasize it. End on that. There me. is no solution to the menace we are facing other than voting out the new patriotic party government. If you have a presidency whose members of parliament, who are health experts, the now vice presidential candidate of the new patriotic party, as for his impunity, mm. his disregard for the people of Ghana, it's just tremendous. You remember this same running mate of Baumia? Tell the people of Keta that if they should be budgeted for, he would lead protest against them. You remember this same vice president of Baumia, Napo? Tell the people of Ghana that if he gets the chance again, mm. he's going to take scholarships that are meant for poor and needy people. 
He said that. Then you remember this same Napo telling people that when he becomes the vice president of Ghana, they are going to give the excavators back to the people to go and do the illegal mining. Right. You remember these people? Then you remember now a member of parliament of the new patriotic party telling people that they are not going to stop Galamse because if they stop Galamse, it will favor MPP. So there is only one choice for the people of Ghana to make. When you go out on December 7 to protect our environment, to kick this thieving government out of our sight, you must vote against the new patriotic party, All right. elect President John Dramani Mahama, and let's save our country. When he was president, the rivers were clean. There is evidence, TV3, you yourself, you have that drone shot of our river bodies. Okay. They were crystal blue. Under President Kufuado, they are like Milo. All we right. must end it on you December asked, 7th. You asked for names. Mm. So he, he put one name in his report, and mm. I'll just read just that paragraph, so mm. bear with me. Mm. He says that, point five, established miners who are members or sympathizers of the NDC. Mm. It is well known in the small-scale mining circles that NDC members and sympathizers were well established in small-scale mining, especially in the western region. They acquired several concessions in mineral-rich areas during the long periods of NDC reign. They had the money and other resources to not only sponsor NDC candidates, but also support independent candidates in the supposedly strongholds of the MPP. This is what happened in Ivalue, Jura, and Takwa constituencies. In Wasa East District, a former NDC deputy minister who is also MP for the Wasa East constituency, has been actively mining in the Subri forest for years. When MPP party officials complained and the army components of Operation Vanguard was withdrawn almost two years to the 2020 elections, the NDC was given an advantage in terms of access to resources from mining. This is because there are far more NDC people engaged in illegal mining than MPP members in the region. So I'm just giving you, because you said he didn't state the, the, any names, the, I wanted to just read this for you, but let me, let me allow okay, Danjuma, I'll give you the time. Bye. Yes, right. I'll give you the time. So that's, note that's it down that's fine. so that we'll come back to it later. But this is not any form of equalization. I just needed to read this so that we know that as Ghanaians, we need to understand that there are people within the NDC and the MPP who have been fingered to be no, engaged in Galamsey. Better, better, better. No, clearly, I'm sorry. Clearly, no, 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 no. Clearly, the no. context is no, that. No, no, no. Clearly, no. the context. I am there are clearly, more the, names in, in here. I am saying that the context is that uh -huh. they don't have a credibility. He has no moral right to speak the way he's speaking. Why? Clear. But what you have read to him. Do you have the moral right as MPP to speak? The hypocrisy is very... Look, from Paul Boatin, you, you started by telling him that. <laughs> you, eh? you told him. Before you go on, let me just I'm remind coming, you. Hold on. Hold on. I'll let you. put it in context. I didn't want you to... I just want to remind you. I understand. I just want to remind you that this from Paul Boatin Yes. report this same report yes. that you are going to speak to yes. was rubbished by the office of the attorney general and said that it did not have enough evidence for them to even go after the people who were named yes. i'm just stating and that first of all so I make agree. your point I agree. now i agree so make so your point now is the reference point of the ndc we have to expose them and he's been exposed can't you see he's embarrassed who? you said names were not mentioned they've read to you how your party people have acquired more money acquired more concession even sponsored independent candidates against the mpp and we shamefully sit here to so tell you, us so that you believe nearly voting out NPP and bringing NDC will solve Ghana's So do you issue. believe this report, from Pom Boateng report? No, no, I'm saying that if you are going by the references they are making... Do you, you as a party, you personally, I, look, do you believe look, this look, report? No, no, I'm saying that, believing in the, uh, in the report or not, the context is very clear. The from Pom Boateng was very... Look, he read, if you read the report, it mm. tells you since the beginning the successes of the Galamsey fight. It's in the report, the report mm -hmm. that you are, you are reading. Mm -hmm. Go and read it. It will tell the successes chop when we started the fight. So we'll, we'll accept you the part of I'm the coming. report. But I, when it comes to no, the mentioning no, no, no. of names, if the NDC, we say... The reference point of the NDC is a frame point Brighton report. We have to expose them that they have no basis to continue to reference that because they are more indicted in the report than any other political party. That is a fact. So are we accepting this report? I am saying that... Is the MPP accepting this report? Are you not getting the content? I'm saying that if we are going by their reference... And you sought to create an impression we shouldn't equalize. We would do so because we will expose their hypocrisy. We won't allow them to get away with the hypocrisy. But if we you don't accept, allow that. if you say no, there's not enough I'm, evidence to go after the people who were mentioned yes. as part of the presidency who are involved in Galamsey per this yes. report, the Attorney General says there was not enough evidence to go after them. Then why should we even take this one, this aspect with the NDC? As sacrosanct. That is why because we shouldn't swallow, the, that's why we shouldn't swallow the report hook, line, and sinker. We should analyze it. You understand whether we accept it or not. Mm. It should be analytical. You understand and be reasonable. Solomon Owusu, you don't be reckless like this. You can't tell me that Akufuado is, 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 is sanctions that Galapse menace in this country. You can't do that. Mm. And you proceed to incompetent or corrupt God that your boss was part of this government for seven good years. Is it today that you realize that this is a corrupt government? Is it today? 
When I talk about the good works of Dr. Baumia, your boss came to, I took him to Savulu to commission seven million dollar rice factory. It's in the market. Is that a lot of good work? The rice factory, is it still functioning? I'm saying that, look, there are challenges. But it so was commissioned and pro it started pro production. It's about the feed to the factory. Just like the so bin bin down. just like the bimbla is been working on and off. I will be honest with you, just like the Bimbila yam and cassava flour factory, it's about the feed to the factory. The factory is there. Currently. When there is, yes. The, currently. Is the currently. Factory, is the factory working? Currently. I, I am saying that it's about the feed. I have to check and tell you. I can't say that, but okay. there are challenges. Carry on. I'm being honest with point. you. Look, organized labor, we respect them. Eh? We accept whatever they are putting across for the betterment of this country. But they shouldn't be dictatorial. They shouldn't. Why do you say you that? You understand? Why? Government said, let's engage. We started the fight. Akufado put his presidency on the line, and we saw the results. People are now disputing that the MPP have suffered in the 2020 election as a result of the fight against Galamsey. That is a fact. We lost several constituencies as a result of this fight. But we are not successful. Here we are, it's still lingering. Look, I drove from all the way from Tamale through Ashanti region to Western region for our uh, manifesto launch. Mm. Terrible. Every young man you see is holding a pickaxe. Every young lady you see is holding a, 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 a is wearing a Wellington, a Wellington boot. Where is he going to? He's going to the Galamsey site. Everywhere you go, thousands of Ghanaians who can't identify whether this person is MPP or NDC. We are saying that a blanket ban would not be good for this country. Just blanketly saying that we are banning uh, uh, mining generally. It will affect legal companies. You understand? That are doing legitimate business. What about, that declaring, that we are what about declaring a state of emergency on our river bodies and our forest areas? Yes, that's I also agree. One that's the, the point that I, I, in, in providing solutions, I would have made that point. The water bodies, I saw the damage there. But organized labor has asked for government or for the president to declare a state of emergency on our river bodies and, and in the forest areas. If you agree that that's something that should be done, why has the president not done it? You see, we have summed up everything. There's a difference between small scale and legal uh, companies than people who are illegally doing this and damaging the environment. You understand? So we should be able to differentiate that and go after those who are damaging our mm. environment illegally. How do you do you that? How do we started a fight. Through a, 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 a interministerial committee, a task force was formed. People went there. Our own human factor. We are Ghanaians. Let's not pretend. Let's go there and see whether you were able to identify this M people. A mass, mass population of Ghanaians are in the pit. I went there personally and I saw them. Okay. You understand? So we should have an alternative source of livelihood. And government attempted that. You remember the hairdress people were trained into hairdressing. People were trained as seamstresses and so on. Okay. Government provided certain solutions. You understand? So why did it work? People were taken through certain trainings. But, but I'm saying that as a country, the attitude of us, you understand, mm. our quest to get money quick, that is what is driven by this uh, galaxy. So government, I will put the solution is that government has uh, formed a five-member committee and they engage with uh, the, uh, labor. Mm -hmm. Labor is saying that government has not uh, fulfilled their demand. So yet, uh, and we are asking, you understand, the consequences of the, this, this, this uh, strike action, has it been quantified? And somebody was telling this morning, if a pregnant woman eh, died mm -hmm. as a result of this strike, eh, who, who are we going to blame in this country? But they gave you about 30 days. They gave you about 30 days, even before coming back to say that they are going to go ahead and declare a strike on October 10. You had all those days to act, at least declare a state of emergency on the river bodies, so that anybody that is mining on the river bodies will not have access to the river bodies, declare a state of emergency in the forest reserves and take away that law that gives the president the sole right to open up mining in forest reserves. You didn't do any of that. Yes, and I'm saying that that is why government said that they should keep on uh, uh, engaging. Look, look how listen, long to, listen, to, listen to this. Have you seen the number of charge. children who are being born deformed? Yes, we uh, were told about the kidney issues, so cancer issues, So what kind of engagement again do you uh, need? I am saying that. Look, mm. listen to Frimpon Boatin. Okay. It was clear to us from the beginning that the fight was not going to be easy. It would take years of hard work, education, dedication, and attitudinal change to bring about the change we desire. This is not the first time Ghana is fighting the menace of illegal mining. <clears throat> she was talking about Aisha Wan. This woman was operating under your government. 
you come and shamefully hear reference her that this government let her out of when she was operated what did you people do to but you? you came you arrested her yes and you let her go yeah i'm saying that that was a, that was not proper okay i'll be honest with you that wasn't proper that is why his boss is proposing a uh, life uh, imprisonment or whatever death sentence for people who are engaging in Ghana. I'm saying we can't go to that extreme. We must find ways and media citizens of Ghana to get them out of those dangerous work they are doing and provide meaningful source of livelihood for them. That should be the, 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 the benchmark. But if people seeking to take political advantage, try attempting to defend criminals who try to plunge this nation into chaos, you embark on a peaceful demonstration. You understand? Look at the chaos. And we are sitting here defending such characters. What, what chaos? You mean the people who embarked on the demonstration were in jail Removing now? a police vehicle, key from the police vehicle, is, is, is not a crime. That we have to defend someone for it. Is, are we not being reckless mining, and irresponsible? Is mining in a forest reserve without a license a crime? Yes. So, Akunta Mining, we've had the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources come out and say, that they were mining in the Tanonimri Forest Reserve without a license. We've seen a report from the fourth estate come out to say it. And yet nothing has been done to this person. Who is the owner of this um, mining concession? There are names that have come up where people have been said to be engaged in illegal mining. We have not picked up any of those people. See, and yet we think that, that no, we think that young people who are on the streets asking for clean water. They are more criminal than the ones who are in the forest destroying for please, the environment. Please, let's not even give them that mileage. It was a clear, political motivated agita street agitation. Clear. How? You understand? They were not doing this for the benefit of us as Ghanaians. Clear, motivated uh, political uh, uh, street agitation. Whether which should it not is, be counted as. Whether it is they, political or not. Yes. The question is were they asking for something that is right for Ghanaians? Clean water. Ghanaians have been asking for it, not today. And what are said, I am under the NDC government. John Mahama told us he has deported over 500 uh, Chinese but, people but in this country. But the river bodies no, were not as my bad. Brother, my brother, he was referencing uh, the, our uh, running mate, Napo. Eh? Your uh, running mate, Prof. Jena, have you seen the videos? Even uh -huh. John Muhammad, his video is here. He said that it will be difficult to, uh, to fight Galamse. Yeah. John Muhammad, the video is here. When did he the say The NDC running mate went inciting people. They are former national executive. You saw them at the river okay. bodies. Koku Boy and Co. Telling people to do what I'm saying. Okay. That is why we said that a pact should be signed by both flag. But we are ready to do it. Dr. Babel is ready to sign it. You understand? Okay. But we will not en en entertain any propaganda for that. You merely voting for a defeated president, bringing her back, will merely solve the issue of Galamsey. Right. That is not the solution. Thank the you. solution is that we need technological and practical measures. That is promised by Dr. Baumia All in right. the MPP manifesto to solve the Galamsey issue. Please hold on for me. Let me just cross over now to Mr. Joshua Ansa. He's the Secretary General of the TUC. And yesterday he was uh, part of the organized labor team that spoke to the media as to why they decided to go ahead and embark on a strike on October 10. Good morning, sir. Hello, sir. Are you there? Mr. Joshua Ansa. Hello. Well, I am guessing he's not on the line. We'll try and reconnect with him um, very soon. Let me try again. Mr. Joshua, are you there? Okay, I think we lost him. Solomon, let me... Oh, he's back? Okay, Mr. Ansa, good morning. Good morning, madam. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing? I'm good, and you? I'm good. Thank you very much. I'm sure you've you been welcome. listening to the media this morning, trying to get an understanding of how Ghanaians feel about your decision to embark on a strike on the 10th and not immediately. Tell us exactly yeah. why you decided that instead of embarking on a strike immediately, you'd rather wait till the 10th of October. Thank you very much. I think that uh, in every situation, everything that you can do it well, you need to plan and plan very well. Mm. Our date for the 10th of October is just very simple. It's something that is going to last for long and we want a better planning of our actions. The historic factor of war, what we are demanding is that on the 11th of September, on the 11th of September 2024, mm -hmm. we had a press conference and we do the statement to the president with our demands how to curb the Salamte manners. Mm -hmm. We told the president that he doesn't have to take it of September to act. It doesn't act. Organized labor will be embarking on a series of actions. And one of the actions we are going to embark on is the 10th uh, October deadline that they are giving to the government. 
on the eleven when we declared when we sent our petition to the, the president mm -hmm. in our president like demanding uh, uh demanding the three terms from the president to be done. Mm -hmm. First first is to declare state of emergency. Second is to draw the revoke the LI two four two two and also ensure that the police and the uh, army is deployed in the forest areas and the river bodies who are the, the illegal activity that is going on around this uh, very important areas in our economy. On the same thing, when we met the ministerial committee, actually they speak us and they told us that we should give them a week for them to do further consultation with other societies, uh, civil societies, and other, all the guys who have also complained or raised concerns about the guarantee marriage. Okay. We were waiting for something from the president, from the ministerial committee, which never came. So on Monday, we were waiting to hear something from the president. Nothing came. So yesterday we met, and then our decision is that if by 10th of October, government doesn't do anything positive about our demands, definitely you are back on the fake strike. All right. So I want to understand something. You are saying that this 10th of October, it wasn't only decided yesterday. You already had that plan at the beginning when you um, spoke to the media? Uh, you mean yesterday's decision or the decision on the 11th? The decision on the 11th. Did you already have the plan that as at the 11th of September, you knew that by 10th October you will go on strike? Is that what you're saying? No, no please. What I'm okay. saying is that on the 11th, when you issued our press statement, we gave the government up to the end of the month, which yes. is 10th of September. Uh -huh. We have had something positive from the government. I mean, there will be no need for any further action. But before the ministerial committee met us on the 17th of September, after our 11th statement, mm -hmm. and they were the promise that they were going to come back to us within a week, and, and they did not do anything about it until the end of the month, that is why I've been asked by reconvene to okay. take this decision. But how, yes. do you, how do you feel about Ghanaians saying that they are disappointed in organized labor because they think that you are backing more than you are biting. You should have embarked on that strike immediately instead of now giving government another 10 days for them to decide whether they'll do this or not. Clearly, if they didn't act between the 11th and the 30th, what's the guarantee they'll act between now and 10th? No, my sister, I don't think it is, it is correct if we say this. We are not giving the government any time to, to rethink or something. Mm. We are rather preparing ourselves for this action. To declare a national strike is not just let's wake up one day saying we are declaring a strike. It needs planning. Okay. We need to plan and plan very well. Our members have to be informed. Our members must understand why they are going to lay down their tools. Our members must be prepared so that when we say that let's lay down our tools, everybody will be on, 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 on top of that. Okay. So it's for our own planning and not that we are giving anybody any time. I That's see. That's how you uh, plan, yes. But if government decides to act within this period, then, you, of course, you call off the strike. No, what, what, what if government decides to act? It, 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 that is our demand. We want ABCD from the government. If government does it, I mean, then there's no need of going on strike. If okay. it doesn't do it, that's why I say that if government fails to adhere to our, 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 our demands, then on the end, it, it, it's already clear that we will go on mission our strike. All right. All right. Well... Thank you very much, and I'm sure we'll wait till yes, the but my sister, Let me use this uh, medium to say this. All right. People are politicizing all the development issue. I think that organized labor is coming clear. It's coming clean with a good decision. That this is a nationwide, uh, this is a nation issue. It's affecting everybody in this country, and we should stop politicizing this issue. All what labor is calling the government to do is to ensure that all political parties, be it MPP, NDP, CP, whatever, you come and sign a pact on their position on this money that is killing this very country. Mm. If that is done, at least if you go out there and you are politicizing, the people will see how you look at you are, and they will not mind you. So this is all what we are calling for, that there should be a pact for all political parties to put their hands on, on that, to sign a pact about their position on this guarantee money. All right. That. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. That's You're welcome. Mr. Joshua Ansa. He's uh, the Secretary General of the TUC and the spokesperson for organized labor. Moses Agana says, Bella, point of correction. The report never said more NDC members are engaged in Galamse uh, than MPP. It said more NDC members are engaged in Galamse in the region, um, not Ghana. But that's what I read. I read exactly what the report said. So I don't even know where you're coming from, from this. Maybe you can replay it and listen to me because I read the exact... Um, paragraph with that. But Solomon, let me come to you.
So clearly, my brother Danjuma has a long way to go. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, 610 kilometers is the distance from Tamale to Accra. So I'm wondering what the communicators in Accra are doing that he had to come and defend the in defense. <laughs> clearly, he has given the government out on, on his own admission that going around the length and breadth of this country, you see young ones digging everywhere. Why do we put in place government? It is the responsibility of government to fashion our policies, to take out all these young ones into meaningful employment. So if by your own admission, you agree that the young ones are not getting any employment to do, and for which reason they are engaging, I'm saying, then what is your business in asking Ghanaians to as it were, renew your mandate? That's what I'm saying that I don't know why you would have to believe at a point. Clearly, we have to have a way out of this situation. Mm. And that is why I would entreat every Ghanaian to go into the Great Transformation Plan and read carefully what Mr. Alantamati is saying. There are no punitive uh, uh, sanctions in place. He is proposing that illegal mining on water bodies and forests would attract a lifetime imprisonment. Finito. Mm. We don't have any time for ifs and buts. If those that are polluting our water bodies. Mind you, before the president put his presidency on the line, the turbidity levels of our water bodies was below 14,000 NTU. As we speak, it's 14,000 NTU. Mm. The acceptable level is supposed to be five. That's five. 500, you mean? Only five. Five, five. okay. You get my point. Mm. That is what is, is, is recommended. But we are doing 14,000. That is why the water company in the central region issued that statement. Because we have gotten to a point that all of us, we have some few years to spend on this earth by virtue of the actions and inactions uh, of this reckless government. Mm. Yes, and I'm very happy that he says that merely removing the MPP and replacing it with the NDC will not solve the problem. So what by his admission is saying that let's do away with the MPP and NDC and settle comfortably on the independent candidate. Because they do not have any clear-cut policies. Mr. Lanchamanti is also saying that we have to ban, we have to, that state of emergency, the, the TUC is saying, Mr. Lanchamanti is saying that, given the opportunity to ban the, uh, uh, mining, whether legal or illegal, because those that have legal licenses, they are doing the illegality. Mind you, when you are given an acreage of two, two acres to mine, and you do 2.5, it's an illegal mine, you have added an illegal mine of uh, uh, point five. But, but there's a coalition of small-scale miners who have come out to say that some of them are doing this legally. So How if do you do know? a blanket you see, ban, see, it affects their livelihood see, as it well. It is only one, one bad nut. That's possible. That's for us all. Mm -hmm. Why have they allowed the bad nuts to uh, uh, spoil their business? So let us ban but it. But it's not their job to stop the, the no, bad you people. Can also record that there's up. a whole government machinery That's what the government that's supposed to but ensure. Have you forgotten that President Kufa to check that of office last year? So I'm even surprised that they are pushing him to do something. He checked out last year. Ah, he told us during the MPP special delegates. Uh, uh, ah. He told the reporter that he yeah. is going. The next administration would deal with all the baggage, the issues. Future possible things. Oh, so he no, he's <laughs> gone. He's gone. He's gone. Long ago. So your issues are not his concerns. As far as he's concerned, he is no more the president. He's only doing his ceremonial duties. But what I'm saying is that. We need to go back to what Alan is saying. Okay. Ban it for a year. Recall all licenses. Come and justify. You know, before you are given a license, a mining license, you, 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 you develop what you call a business plan. You give it to a minerals commission. In that business plan, you show how you reclaim the land. Mm. Now you will come and tell us that Belamundi uh, company, you are giving site A. You say, what's up, Memphi? Let's go there and see whether or not you have behaved within what you told the Minerals Commission for which region you were given the license. That is all to wait. Okay. Now he is going to engage the 48th Engineer Regiment to demobilize, as it were, seize all accoutrement mm -hmm. or equipment, and then store it properly so that we do the proper inventory. After all these things are done, then we can go back and see, save the bad nuts from the good ones, and you start with, look, if you are going to say, if you stop them, the impact of the economy will be green. First of all, there is no economy at, at the moment. Okay. And so we must do the impact or the effects of their actions. The harm that it is causing is more than the money that they think they are making. All right. And Let that is where we are coming from. Let me bring Julius in. The way forward.
Yes. Um, you know, Bella, I had to address a few, you know, issues before I proceed. I, I find it utterly bizarre, ludicrous, when MPP people use the word hypocrisy and in the same sentence tell us that Vice President Baumier's good works, when he was responding to Solomon, he claimed that he commissioned a rice factory or something of the sort mm. and it was in Vice President Baumier's name. The same Vice President Baumier who told us that the budget that goes to Parliament is not his. How can the project be his own? And so hypocrisy should not be in the same sentence of MPP people. I mean, with all respect, when uh, the, the late Mumuni Baumia was, was, was leaving this world, did he leave some gold mine somewhere that Vice President Baumia, out of charity, decided to use for the project? Is it not the government of Ghana's money? So suddenly, it is his project when it's a good thing. But when it's the negatives, you run away and you are saying hypocrisy in the same sentence. Please, spare me. So the issue of him saying that MDC people were involved in Galamsey and all of those things, I think, with all respect, that it is ludicrous to conceive, utterly ridiculous to even think of saying it out. And with all respect to our audience, nonsensical to choose this platform of all places to say it. This is the reason why. The people you mentioned were licensed small-scale miners. And I made a point earlier that somebody may be licensed and still do illegal mining. Do you know the authority of the president as the executive authority in this country in such instances? is to instruct the Minerals Commission to withdraw the license of those people, regardless of who they are. So whether they are MPP people or NDC people whatsoever, if your own report is saying that those people still continued in business, it is your doing. So you don't sit on this platform and tell us that NDC people were doing what and whatever. And especially when we hear your people telling people loudly that they are going to encourage the Galamse. It is the president's doing that Galamse continues in Ghana, regardless of who is doing it. And that brings me to the point of him saying that the people who are out there demonstrating against Galamse are politically motivated and whatever. Everything within the context of our governance is a political issue. If I must make political demands for something that is killing all of us to end, you tell me that the president must first of all do a partisan purge of the people who are making the demand before he answers to them. Again, with all due respect to our listeners, it is nonsensical for anybody to make such a proposition. If it is PDP, PFP, NDC, CPP, whoever who are on the street demanding that Galamse must end, you don't do a partisan purge first of all before you solve the problem. You deal with the problem because people who are dying do not matter when they are NDC or MPP. When people, children get deformed in the wombs of parents, it doesn't matter when they are MPP or NDC. When mothers lose their children because of Galamse, it doesn't matter whether they are MPP or NDC. So again, it is nonsensical to make such a proposition. And again, on the powers of a president to end Galamse. With respect to our audience, some people make a mistake that once a law passes through parliament, it means both sides have agreed He's on it. Putting it, on the microphone. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, it means both sides have agreed on it and all of those things. I've seen tweets of people saying that why did the NDC allow LI 2462 to pass and all of those things. The president who he is saying that came to meet NDC people during Galamse was the one who decided again through his minister to put an ally that encourages people to go into our forest reserves and mine. And after they did that, they gave those licenses to MPP people. But they went article, to Parliament. At, yes, Article 11.7. That is why I want to read it to our audience, so they understand okay. the powers of a president giving executive authority to a political party. Article 11.7 reads, an order, rule or regulation made by a person or authority under a power conferred by this constitution or any other law shall a be laid before parliament b be published in the gazette on the day it has been laid before parliament and c come into force at the expiration of 21 sitting days after being so laid before parliament before the expiration of 21 days uh, 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 unless unless parliament before the expiration of 21 days announce the order rule or regulation by votes of not less than two-third majority of all members of parliament the implication of that is that the executive president of this country nanado danko ekufuado and his sidekick, Mahmoud Obama, and the people they have appointed to the ministries have authority to also make laws by this provision. That is how LI 22, uh, uh, what do you call 24, yes, came into force. The Minister of Lands and Natural Resources laid that ally in Parliament. When you lay that ally, unless you have a vote of two third majority, it cannot be defeated. Do you know the number of MPs in Parliament today? Okay. 137, 137 with one independent. How is the NDC going to marshal the two third majority to actually defeat that bill? So it happened because President Ekufuado endorsed it. He did it and paid the reports of uh, what do you call it, the fourth estate. The people in the MPP were already applying for the licenses to go into our forest reserves before the LI was passed. It means that it was a proud discussion within the new patriotic party. That party here, Sika, until we are going to lay this LI and allow President Kufuado to allow you to go into the forest reserves. Are you going to sign go this into the forest reserves. Party? Let me tell you, Bella, Land of all the points me. I have been making here, mm -hmm. if it is not clear to anybody, particularly my brother from the MPP, 
that signing a part is utterly useless in the face of the executive authority that they have now to deal with the problem, then I think we are dealing with problematic people and they must be out of government. If President Muhammad decides today, as opposition leader, uh -huh. without any authority, without armed forces, without police, without DCs, without regional security councils, and says that I have signed a pact with a new patriotic party, and the Ghanaian people mistakenly, and God forbid, really let's, uh, uh, what do you call it, Mahmoud Bahamia, how does President Muhammad say that because I've signed a pact with you during elections, go and stop the people? Again, it falls no, right back to the exercise. To say that if you become president, the pact, this is what you intend Bella, to do. Bella, the pact is not needed because the laws are already clear. The authority of a president to withdraw licenses, the authority of the president to use force when the people are not going to obey the laws. The authority of all those okay. things that I've said are clear. Why do we need a pact? And what is the pact going to do? Pacts don't enforce themselves. So your party will Laws sign the pact. are enforced by people. I will not speak on behalf of President Mahama. As far as I am concerned, he has not all made right. a statement on signing the pact. But I want to say as a spokesperson for the NDC, that pacts of this nature are utterly useless. All right. Nanjima, will Let's your see. party sign the pact? Oh, definitely. We have uh, assured Ghanaians of our demonstrable commitment in that regard. Will we would, they would not sign it because Gomama is promising Ghanaians that he will allow them to continue doing what I'm saying. His running mate is doing the same thing. How can they sign a pact to that effect? How? You understand? And because of the same atrocities that he was sacked with disgrace, and you people are telling us that if we bring the same man back, he's coming to do magic. What is he coming to do? What, what can he do that was he, he wasn't able to do when he was given the opportunity? Please, you don't have a case. You understand? The point that I'm making here is that we are very committed. Solomon Usu, the point is that you don't say that the president has sanctioned the, 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 what is happening in this country that relative to Galamsey. Oh, you understand? You don't say that. That's a very <laughs> reckless statement. You know the president wouldn't do that. You understand? You know that. And now trying to denigrate this government by saying, I told you here, you have both saving for seven good years. I like Charmantini, you are saying there's no economy. He was defended after COVID. He was on Metro TV, TV3 here defending this economy. But what a hypocrisy. Please, 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 you have to be comfortable. You have to be comfortable. No, you have to be comfortable. MPP people have been here defending the party. It's just an opportunity that I've got. I'm not coming all the way from Tamale to come here and defend what is indefensible. But my brother's convolution eh, and ignorance is very glaring for any careful observer. Ah, you use words like nonsensical. I didn't, I didn't say anything. You, on this venerable platform, you use words like nonsensical. Look, I was saying that you shouldn't be hypocritical. It's a national issue that we all need to come on board to fight. Whether MPP or NDC that is in government, Bella, I can tell you that Ghanaian citizens who are doing the will continue to do it. But how are we going to fight it? You are asking of solutions. He didn't provide a solution. You understand? Because they have none. They presided over Galamse and corruption everywhere. That is why Ghanaians chase them out. Now these same people come with the same man. You understand? Tainted with blood. Whose hands? Tainted oh, with blood. Oh. No, no, in context, in, 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 in context. not uh, blood in okay. two sense. You understand? Literally, who came with not, not, not just clean hands. You understand? After okay. referencing former President Mahama. In that context, I would never denigrate him in that manner. I'm just referencing that he doesn't come with clean hands. Mm. His record doesn't speak for him. You understand? His record doesn't speak for him. He has been president before. Anything you people say, Ghana ask you questions. What can the man do now? That he couldn't do it. So, Bella, we will sign the pack. Dr. Bormier is very committed. And he said that he will provide innovative solutions, mm. technological solutions. You understand? We need to improvise. How did we uh, start the first one and we're having the results? Mm. How can we improve on it? Organized labor. He told us that uh, the committee, ministerial committee, engaged them and told them they will need to consult other stakeholders before they get back to them. And now we are being, uh, uh, confronted with this strike action. They should receive their decision. We are building a nation and we'll continue to build a nation. Two wrongs doesn't make a right. I am seeing the consequence of this strike action. Mm. You understand? As against the Galamse, if we are complaining of, of issues, we shouldn't compound the issues in a form of a strike action. I will plead with them to receive their decision, go back to the negotiation table with government to ensure that meaningful solution, like they said, the, the amendment of the law. But, but but if this is urgent, the government should act. Don't wait for them to come back to the table. They've told you what they want. Act immediately. As simple as that. Yes, that is why government have taken the step. By ensuring that the five-member ministerial committee will engage all the stakeholders as to the next line of action that we, we, we will take. But look, Akufado has an impact. You know that. 
we have not succeeded in the fight. But he has an look. The results are there. Where? He started. Where? The Galam Sefa. He, he started well. No people know. Where is the result? I read to you. I read to you. I read to you. No, 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 no. no. I read to you. I read to you the portions of Frimpo Bantu's report. You understand? It's a tough challenge. You can say that. You understand? You can say that because you support an independent candidate. He has never been in government before. As a president, I mean, you can say that. But NDC, they have been there. They know what we are talking I like about. Your position. You understand? Like your they know what we. They, you they, been, uh, yeah, okay. you have not been okay. given the opportunity to, 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 to as like president. Like but, but the NDC have been, yes, have been yes. But the NDC have been given the opportunity. You understand? Yes. And what was the result? Yes. So we are saying that let's come together as a country, okay. whether NDC or MPP. Me, what I saw in those constituencies and villages, eh, mass number of Ghanaians who are doing that work. Eh, if we are going to take that work from them, we must provide source of livelihood. And it's been provided, you know. If people can sell cocoa farms, if people can sell whatever okay. to do, Galab say, it All tells right. you the government of the situation. It is not just as, as saying that the government should come and say, we have banned mining entirely in this country, blanketly. When All we right. know that the, the support that our gold reserve offer to this economy is very huge. Thank you, we shouldn't be making such statements. All right. Let, let me just cross over now to Zoom. And I want to speak to Dr. Jonathan Asante Autry. He's a political analyst and a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Coast. Good morning, Sam. Thank you for joining us. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Good morning. Oh. You are still muted. So we'll need to unmute you. If you can unmute yourself, if you can hear me, please unmute yourself. I see your lips moving, but I can't hear you. You're not audible. Quite unfortunate. All right. We'll try and rectify that. But I want us to move on to our next topic very quickly so we can wrap up here. And yesterday, I don't know if uh, your party was also, or your movement was also at the IPAC meeting. I believe they were. No, we were not allowed in. You were not allowed yes, in? Yes. Why? Very interesting. It's I only mean, for parties. For parties. I can you imagine? Oh, <laughs> how come? Uh, yeah, that is what, what we are dealing with. That is a, the, the problem that we are dealing with as a country. Uh, we were not there, and it was as though uh, it was an arranged something. If you look at the deliberations, mm. yesterday was Ghana's Day of Shame, and, and it explains why our politics is not developing. If you look at the kind of uh, presentations that were made by other political parties, I felt ashamed as a Ghanaian. Look, a political party, NDC, mm -hmm. identified problems with the voter register. We could have done more because we have sophisticated softwares. Mm. We are very much, and I mean Alan, prepared for this election. But unfortunately, we have not been given the voter register. So when the NDC raised the issues, we were only looking at the responses that would be given to their issues. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, the EC confirmed or affirmed their position that yes, indeed, the issues that they have raised are legitimate and indeed it has actually taken place. So once you said all these issues have taken place, the reasonable thing to do is that you call for an audit. That audit call shouldn't have come from the NDC, but it should have come from the Electoral Commission itself. Mm. You go to an IPAC meeting, and people that are supposed to be concerned, I mean, the political parties, you are going around the country, if indeed the money is coming from your own pocket, and you are expending it, mm. and you know how expensive it is to run the campaign, and you were given a voter register, you did not do a meticulous job to even identify all this, but for the benevolence of the National Democratic Congress, mm -hmm. you, have, you have gotten to know that Things are not right with the regi uh, voter register. The least you could do is to thank the NDC and cause the Electoral Commission to engage in an audit. They went there showering places. And I was like, are we serious? To the extent that what even freaked me, and I was so shocked. The CPP rep was speaking, mm -hmm. and speaking in English, and I, I saw a clear uncle clapping. Hey! Yeah. How did you understand what the man was saying? No, 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 but that's not fair. No, which one is not fair? Your crowd doesn't understand English. No. Quote me anyway. You, you allow me. She doesn't me. understand Oh, she English, doesn't understand. she cannot speak. She yes. cannot speak. She cannot understand. She doesn't understand. Take it from me. You, you are saying The this. man had not got it. And in fact, the man started screaming. And I saw a crowd go, Ka, pa, 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 hey. Me neighbor. Oh, that's unfair to Ikea, I am telling you as it is. I don't miss words. Have you tried speaking English with her? I it's have engaged her severally. Even the number that she was giving, she turned it around. No, let me tell you. We are, we are very serious in this country. 
Elkia Donko was clapping, and as though she has been briefed before the meeting that a CPP man will get up and speak, and this is all that he will be speaking to. So you clap. Because what the CP person went to do there is, is, is at best unfortunate. That an anomaly has been detected. Now the EC also comes to even confirm our fears. And mind you, my candidate Allah had written to the Electoral Commission on the 23rd of September, mm. detailing the way forward in resolving these problems amicably. One, by establishing a committee that involves all the candidates with the EC chairing and inviting the IT consultant to the Electoral Commission so that they also all identify the way forward in mm. terms of how the auditing will be done. The Electoral Commissioner yesterday decided to ignore this beautiful proposal and was trying to play the emotional card. For Christ's sake, Madam Jane Mensah, we are not doing emotional business. It is this kind of emotional business that we have done that brought in President Kufado that today we are having to beg him on a simple matter of a state of emergency. Mm. So if you yourself admit that 38 names were illegally transferred, your IT, uh, IT expert says that the IT system has vulnerabilities, then isn't this same thing that has to lead to a conclusion that we sit down and do a proper auditing to assure ourselves that indeed the system that we are going to use in election 2024 well, is, is, is foolproof. Well, she says the EC chairperson yesterday said that they've cleaned up the voters' register. How did she clean it? They're going to give a new one, How the she, final one you see, to you the see, party. You so see, let, let, let you, me just bring Julius you, in. You, uh, well, let me, uh, you, let well, me bring well, Julius in. Well, 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 well yesterday I, I, she did say that, that now they've yeah, fixed yeah, all the errors. Yeah, yes, and so but, they'll give but, you the final voters' register. That's, that's fine. The NDC has issued a statement yesterday that we accept the EC's position <coughs> to, I mean, provide a register for us. Mm. To that extent, we accept that. But one thing must be made clear. The problems that have been identified are not linked only to the register. They are linked to the EC's IT system, such that access to those IT, uh, uh, IT systems by numerous people, some of which the EC itself has admitted they have no control over, mm is the harbinger of doom for that register. Because these same errors, which they claim they have corrected now, can resurface in November or even in December the 1st. At what point again are we going to sit down, having a meeting over which one is corrected and re-exhibited and given back to the parties before we hold the election? And so the point is that our demand for an audit of the EC's IT system is actually linked to a credible register. Because if you can sit here, and somebody sits up in the north, goes into your database, transfers people illegally without any verification whatsoever, and that has been detected by the NDC. Why should we wait in December before we detect that another transfer has been made in Bono region? But, but, and we but are now tracing that's what the MPP is so, saying, that they don't understand why you say you have your evidence. Provide the evidence to the EC so that they can look at the errors that you have raised if, if, if we, in your evidence if, if, if we've not, and if, fix the problems. You are refusing to do that. If, if we've not provided evidence of the problems, what problems have the EC? Well, the EC is saying you should hand it over to them so that they can take a look at it. What that defeats in, in this whole process is that it does not solve the linkage between the IT system and the problems we are seeing. The transfer in, uh, what do you call it, Pusiga, for mm -hmm. example, is enough evidence to show that there's a problem with the IT system. If somebody can go into the EC system and the electoral commission at head office has no control over who goes into the system, the person can effect transfers okay. without the chairperson or the commission in Accra having any knowledge whatsoever about it. Then the political parties detect it. And you are saying that we should condone this by simply going to do the hard work, provide it to the electoral commission. The electoral commission comes and tells us that they have actually corrected it. We go without dealing with the source of it. The source of it is the ability of somebody to go into the register without the commission being aware. All when right. do we solve that one? Okay. So unless there is a full audit of the EC's IT system, <clears throat> that lays the mind of everybody to the conclusion that it is impossible for any person other than the accredited persons who would be doing that lawfully, transfer people and all of those things that have happened, then the problem has not been solved. Mm. And again, the NDC's demand is that you can't just say that you are doing exhibition online and that ends the matter. The records have shown that even the exhibitions that we have done over the period, okay. I mean, in physical exhibitions, we've not had up to 40% of people turning out. Now that we have a Learn situation where it is clearly evident to the people of Ghana that there is a high risk that they will show up on De December 7 and their names are not on the register, they are unable to vote, the people would not be more interested in showing up to check it. 
how many people will be able to do the online verification? So the NDC is saying that do physical re-exhibition of the voter register is so that, that people possible? can have access. All right. It is very possible. Let me come to that. It is very man. possible. Yeah. The time that we have is very possible. We will right. not take a Thank week you. to do Thank you, you, see, you see, you, you see uh, it's very unfortunate. You saw the embarrassment at the IPAC meeting. Embarrassment. All the political parties stood on their grounds. And told MDC in the face that we will not, not allow all of them. them. Uh, almost, all of them. almost. There were about and stood on their ground and told MDC in the face, Omani oh, Boama is deputy, my brother computer, mm -hmm. that they would not allow them to plan this nation to chaos with their lies. How can you be telling lies like this? How? Where is the evidence? And my brother is just struggling. Even your national executive have not been able to adduce evidence to this uh, lies that they have been peddling. But Look, we are campaigning now eh, to this lies that your people are peddling. Do dead men vote? You said how many thousand dead people can, can dead person vote through a biometric register? Yeah, but they shouldn't be there in the first place. Yes. But, but and yes, and, 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 and people, if people are illegally transferred, didn't you see what happened in Manchester South to Manchester North? We are a responsible political party. That is what a responsible political party does. You commission your police station executive to investigate the, the register. That is what we did. That is how come we detected the anomaly and, and took it to court mm -hmm. and it was reversed. We have standards. We have laws in this country that rectify the anomalies. We have procedures and processes. You engage in useless demonstration. Setting the stage, you understand, that when they are defeated, people will say that they have rigged the election in favor of MPP. So also, we did not brought Akufado, supported him because of emotions. He promised free education and he delivered. That's not the he only promised thing he promised. to restore the nation and teacher training allowance and he delivered. He you promised understand? To one destroy. this is one factory and he delivered. And he promised, he promised agenda one one one. My region, my region, eight agenda one 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 hospital is at appreciable level of completion. Oh, percentage. My region. When you say appreciable, you it's Myung, very subjective. Myung is over eighty percent. We will commission it before election. Psychiatry, first time in the history of Northern Region, we are having a regional psychiatry hospital. Thirty four million dollar Tamale interchange. I told you about the Titali Road. Today, it takes 20 minutes drive from Karga to Gushegu. We were holding Look, the president's words to Listen, he said that by the time his administration ends, yes. this Agenda 111 hospitals yes. that he could not complete yes. after 18 months, yes. he will make sure that they are completed and commissioned before yes. the end of his tenure. Yes. 111 or 88 to hospitals, whichever one. So we are I waiting don't for think it. all those projects will be able to commission, but appreciable level okay. eh, will be able to commission. So we are doing campaign. And we are appealing to the masses. You can continue engaging in useless demonstration and attacking the electoral commission, but put but your house in order. But does it not yield to your own benefit if there's an independent audit? If there's a problem in there and there's an independent audit, there are processes audit. that have been rectified. You had our general secretary. You are sitting before us. So Mani Buama, provide your evidence. He was sitting there. You didn't, you didn't hear uh, Ivan Simaku, director of election. He told them. Look, we have processes, existing processes that we use to clean up the register. And this is what was their position when they were in government. What was their position? Did they ever support an audit to the electoral rule? Never. You understand? So this hypocrisy and double standard. Look, you brought a man that Ghanaians have rejected. And we reject him again. They will reject Joe Mahama. Look, we are coming from the hinterlands. He knows. He has been traveling to countryside, that developmental project that is going on. You understand? The improvement in people's livelihood, that is what is going to trigger the victory for Dr. Mahmoud Baumia in this election. 850,000 more people have been pushed below the poverty line. You are still talking about improvements in livelihood. Today, One million in and 2.1 million, over 2 million people have been, uh, 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 have gotten up an uh, avenue of opportunity of employment under this government. You have not look, given us the details. So that thing we've been asking. Look, let me give you a few Someone details. said 2.3. Someone me, said 2.1. Let's go to the services sector. The, we have 4,000. The, 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 the staff strength staff strength of, the staff strength of so. fire service okay. was just 4,000 mm -hmm. when we came to power. Today is 14,000. <laughs> one this is one factor, 600,000. It is there. They have sent me the videos. 600,000 jobs? Yes. Direct and indirect. They've sent me the, the, the videos of the rice factor, which is in Savulugu market. My brother, we are okay. not joking. We All are right. building this country and we will continue to build it. You don't talk in favor of NDC. You, All right. Solomon, so don't do that. Okay. The NDC couldn't adduce evidence. First you were all, not part of it. Thank and you. you are here defending I take, the NDC. Thank you. I take a great exception to what you are saying. I am here to market my candidate. Why you would the NDC benevolently uh, did let, what? How can you that? That is their responsibility to do that. Gentlemen, the party is their responsibility to do that. Your party itself acknowledged the work that the NDC did at that Acknowledge where? Where we took the issue to court? to also speak. He's a political analyst and a senior lecturer at the UCC. Good morning, sir. But how can you come and do that? We had, a bit of, we had a bit of a struggle with your Zoom, so I think that the phone line would work perfectly. What are your thoughts? Did you yeah. follow the IPAC meeting yesterday? What are your thoughts? 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, let me say good morning to yourself and your and colleagues at the studio. I think that um, we should congratulate the EC for a wonderful work done. But more importantly, we must commend the NDC for that critical observation of the work of the EC and the the hypocrisy that others demonstrated uh, in terms of praise singing and other things, I felt that it is because they don't have the capacity to do due diligence of the work or the register itself of the EC. That's the more reason why they went out there to do those praise singing. Uh, as I said earlier on, the NDC have done a good job. The EC has equally responded. And I think that the credibility, in my view, has gone up. Um, I think I had someone say if they have evidence. I think that you are refusing to understand the fact that they have given you evidence that has led to this improved, you know, um, um, register, so to speak, that the IT director spoke to. Mm. Now, th there is one deficiency with... Uh, some of the questions that you know have been put to the NDC. For example, you do not expect the NDC at the IPAC meeting yesterday to be able to tell you in detail some of the problems that they will find. Mm. Now, apart from that, currently you have not given them the modified or the corrected version of the register. So you do not expect them to do, you know, a critical scrutiny of the document until they have it. Because what they did was for the previous one. And that is what led all of us to this particular position. And so I am rather waiting for the NBC, the PPP, and the other political parties that have, you know, the wherewithal to do another scrutiny mm. of the register. To be frank with you, what the NDC is demanding makes a lot of sense because it's like we are treating the cancer, but we are not locating the cause of the cancer. And so if the cause of the cancer emanates from the vulnerabilities embedded in the IT system, then the only thing that can be done is either you allow all the political parties to see what the IT you know, system does so that everybody will be rest assured that nobody can manipulate the IT system to the disadvantage or advantage of one or the other. That is something that is left. Mm. And I think that it does not give anybody any advantage or disadvantage. It rather gives some kind of certainty that indeed, if you lose these elections, you've lost, mm. and it is a genuine loss. All if right. you win, it is because the people have given you the mandate to do so. Other than that, we'll just be top dressing the issues. Okay. The register itself is one of the problems. And I think that, as I said earlier on, the issue has really done some human job, but mm. it had to take someone with a scrutinous eye to compel them to do that which they have done. All right. But... So the cost, which is the IT, is something that maybe if they go and check the new uh, register, they will be able to know exactly where the cost, you know, could be located. Mm. And then probably they can ask for that, you know, scrutiny with the IT system. As to whether that will lead to forensic audit or not, I don't know. All right. But whichever way the, the issue is, they will have to have that certainty that nobody is going to have any advantage or disadvantage. All right. Now, you look at the number of parties, political parties that were there, and a greater number mm. of them actually did not see why the NDC, for some reason, you know, was raising all these objections. You look at the Donkos party, for example, and when she spoke specifically, she said she didn't understand why the NDC, since the appointment of Madame Jean Mensah, have been tormenting the lady, because she's a woman who is doing her job and doing it to the best of her knowledge. And yet, all the NDC has done is to try and downplay her efforts in ensuring that there's a credible voters register and we have a peaceful um, you know, voting exercise over the years. What are your thoughts on some of the comments that were made by some of these parties? Well, sometimes I ask myself, 
How does it happen that a Piodonko is a presidential candidate in this country? It tells me that the, the presidential you know, uh, position of the seat has been reduced to a ridiculous level. <laughs> you know, someone who speaks Chi and every communication out there was in English, and yet, you see, it, it baffles me. All you needed to do was to speak to the register. Mm. Speak to the register. That is what brought them there. So when she went about on that ridiculous you know, tangent of communication, I asked myself, what did she go and do there? Sometimes I get surprised. How did she qualify? And then Banan Mona got disqualified. I don't understand. And you see, some of them, um, it, it's just like when they are doing vetting. When a, a ministerial nominee is from the party that is chairing, you see the ridiculous question that they ask that nominee. That is exactly what happened yesterday. You need that people with what? Critical, with, 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 with that critical ability. Because that what is there is data. And mm. it needs scientific what, interpretation and interrogation before you be able to appreciate and understand. But if that is just what meets the eye, I mean, Madame Okadonko, she ought to, she ought to, by now, apologize to the NDC. Because okay. the way and manner she spoke. And I'm happy that you see dissociated itself from those comments. You see, because the way and manner she spoke, I mean, these are more or less like people who go into politics with their stomach. You All see, right. ahead of them. It is just unfortunate. She ought to All apologize. Right. Just, just briefly, 10 seconds. So in that case, the independent candidates were not allowed with their reps to enter this uh, meeting. Meanwhile, they are also on the ballot paper. And so was that not problematic as well? Just briefly, sir. Yeah, it, it is. It is problematic. Probably we may have to amend the law or something of that sort to accommodate you know, their views on, on such platform because I can tell you that the independent candidate, Mr. Allen, is going to have more votes than, than, than probably about 10 of the political parties, minority political parties combined. Mm. So if the view is not represented there, okay. I mean, it's, it's least much to be desired. We may have to amend the law to accommodate the views of the independent candidate All going right. forward. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Dr. Jonathan Asantiotri is a political analyst and a senior lecturer, and he's been speaking to us. Our time is up, unfortunately. So we have to go. We have to go. Not yeah. even a minute. No, unfortunately, I've been told I have to go. Uh, Solomon Owusu is a senior communicator for Movement for Change. Uh, we also had Julius Anthony. Julius Kwame Anthony is the NDC spokesperson on youth development, national communications team member as well. And Danjima Yusif is a Northern Regional Director of Communications for the MPP. Good morning, Dr. Nortedua. He says that ask him to define a job. Ask him to explain what happened to nurses' training allowances specifically. Ask him why they can't pay. Ask him if he knows his government's cabinet enrollment and still struggles to pay nurses. Ask him if he understands the transition to student loans and wider enrollment. He should stop shouting and learn. This MPP man doesn't understand. I can't read all your messages. Akosia, Akosia, good morning to you. You say you're close marking me. Please go and campaign. Go and campaign in Adenta. But good to hear from you this morning. I can't read all your messages, but good morning to everyone. And we have to go at this point. Step into the world of Dewa 539 for your chance to win big with Dewa Direct and Dewa Chop Money. With Dewa Direct, dial star 446 hash. Pick 1 to 39 and win 20 times, 40 times, or 400 times your stake. And win cash every evening at 7 p.m. and on Sundays at 6 p.m. Early birds love Dewa Chop Money. At 10 a.m., dial star 446 hash. Choose 1 to 39 and win 20 times, 40 times, or 400 times your stake. Play at dewa-nla.com or dial star 446 hash. Need help? Call 055-6259-249 or 53 Dewa Afa. Remember to play cash out star 439 hash and select option 2. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. We have more coming up. This is TV3 Day. Keep watching.